All right, we've got a review today. Uh, this was sent into the channel by Banggood. It is innovation. Um, it is a multimeter and oscilloscope. So uh, I've looked at these for some time, as you probably have also. And um, the, the ones that I looked at a while ago, the oscilloscope was very, very slow. They went up to something like 20 kilohertz or uh, you know, megahertz or something. And they didn't go very, very fast because um, there's not much horsepower in these things. Um, this one claims to be a 40 megahertz, 200 mega samples per second oscilloscope. So it sounded interesting. Um, now, uh, we're not sure exactly what the use case of this thing is. Obviously, it's not going to replace a Regal, right? <laughs> but uh, we'll take a look. It comes with a bag. Uh, comes with uh, temperature probes and a user manual. So let's uh, let's uh, drop let's drop it on the floor first, and then uh, we'll take a look at the uh, specifications for this thing. All right, uh, one two forty by one sixty dot matrix display, ten meg ohm input, batteries three double A batteries, uh, automatically shut down in fifteen minutes. Um, let's see here, use time, so it's all sp battery's supposed to last eight hours. Um, analog bandwidth, 40 megahertz, 200 mega samples per second, 8-bit resolution, uh, non-linearity within a bit, number of channels, one, input resistance, 10 mega ohm, they already said that, range of sensitivity, um, 500 millivolts per division. So that's one of the limitations of this thing is it won't look at low uh, low voltage things. So if you're going to use this as an oscilloscope, it's going to be high level stuff. So um, definitely, you know, 500 millivolts per division. So you're looking, you know, TTL signals or, 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 or three volt three volt logic, stuff like that, it'll be okay with. It'll probably be a good one to, to do uh, automotive testing, which is like a five volt system or 12 volt system. Um, but it's not going to be able to look at microvolts and millivolts and stuff like that, so it's not, not that. Um, let's see here, trigger, blah, 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 auto measurement functions. Uh, let's see, frequency counter, I guess, up to 10 megahertz. Uh, did I see frequency on this thing? Yeah, there is frequency on this thing. Uh, duty ratio, diode test, up to three volts. Um, let's see here, uh, fuse. It's got two fuses, 500 milliamps and 10 amps. So it has a, a 10 amp measurement range. Um, and did I miss that? Did I miss the accuracy? <laughs> I might have. Um, yeah, here we go. Here's the accuracy. 1% uh, plus 10 digits. See, I don't think they, I don't think they specify that right. But anyway, it says 1% 10 digits, uh, AC 1.5% 10 digits up to 400 hertz. DC current 1.5%, AC current 1.5%. Or DC current was 1.2%. And then uh, resistance is about 1.2%. Capacitance, 3%. Temperature, 2%. Okay, so it's pretty standard, you know, low-end uh, multimeter type stuff. But uh, uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn it on. Auto power on quiet mode. Interesting. So it's got a, a, a dot matrix display. So... Uh, it's going to have large font, things like that. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll uh, put a uh, put a clip. I won't use theirs. I'll use mine here. Let's measure some measure some volts here. Okay. So this is supposed to be two point four nine 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 nine. 2.498, very nice. Uh, 4.999 is 4.99, oh, 4.999, perfect. Uh, 4.96, 7.49, fine. 
and then 9.995, 9.99, so very, very accurate for voltage, good. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and go to the next range here. Uh, we have resistance. Oh, one thing that I should show off here, this thing is not a speedy meter. <laughs> this thing's really, really, really slow. So uh, here, uh, here I've got uh, 10 volts going on, so one, two, three, go. And then it shows up, so off. One, two, three, go. Yeah, so it's, it's a very, very slow meter. All right, um, let's see, turn this off. Let me get some resistors. Okay, we'll put it on resistance. And let's measure, these are 0.01% resistors. Uh, 100 ohms, 99.9. 0.998K .9. uh, uh, ohms, very nice. 998, 999, and then 10 meg ohms. Let's see if it can measure 10 meg ohms. There we go. 10.03, very nice. So certainly within, when it's much better than, than its spec. So that looks pretty good. Uh, the other functions uh, for here are See, how do you change function? Select, I guess. Resistance, so this is the diode level. This is the beeper. Now we can test the beeper out. Pretty fast. Yeah. Passes the, uh, passes the continuity check. Uh, capacitance. Uh, yeah, let's try some capacitors out. I've got some here on the bench somewhere. Let me look for them. Okay, this one is 0.3% uh, accurate uh, capacitor and it is measuring 15.72 uh, and this is marked 15.72. Perfect. Wow. Let's measure this one. Uh, this one is marked uh, 100, 99.3, okay, and what is this one? Let's measure him. Thirty-eight point two seven. He's measuring. Uh, he's marked a thirty-eight point four seven. So I think it is measuring capacitance just fine. Measure this one. This one is only a uh, one percent, a one percent uh, capacitor. So some of the error might be in the capacitor itself. Uh, five nine five. In the past, I've measured it five nine eight. So very very nice. So capacitance definitely is measuring well. Uh, we have a uh, temperature centigrade. I don't think. Oh yeah, you can change it to Fahrenheit here. Um, HFE, so for those who want to measure, <laughs> actual measure uh, transistors, it's got, it's got an HFE thing on it. Um, milliamps, amps, I'm not going to measure those, they're going to be fine. And uh, AC, oh, these are for the oscilloscope. Oh, there we go, there's our oscilloscope. So, uh, we need to hook this up to a... A function generator and uh, give this thing a try. Now, you've noticed that there's no BNCs on this thing, so it is a it is a uh, probed os uh, oscilloscope, right? It doesn't have compensated probes. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it does. All right, so I'm inputting a one kilohertz sine wave at um, two volts peak to peak. So it sees it very good. If you push the R button here, it does a uh, auto range. Uh, there you go. Uh, so gives us a pretty picture. That's pretty good. Let's uh, change the waveform shape. Uh, square wave. Oh, that's pretty fast. Uh, triangle wave. It's a, it's a little slow on the uptake. 
but not bad. And uh, I don't see any overshoot or undershoot or anything. Well, that's pretty good. All right, but this is one kilohertz. Uh, let's go up in frequency. Let's go to, um, let's see here, frequency. That was one kilohertz. Let's go to 100 kilohertz. 100 kilohertz. How's that doing? And you can see there's a faint little trace there every once in a while, and that's because it, is, it has an auto range. So you have to push the button for it to auto range. And there it is. So, you know, it's, it doesn't act like a normal pro a scope, but uh, you need to kind of like set it, I guess. Um, but once you push the auto range, it finds it. Uh, here's the here's a sine wave, uh, 100 kilohertz. And what the square wave have any ringing on it? No, that's fine. Maybe a little tiny bit of uh, overshoot, tiny, tiny bit. Let's see, let's do megahertz. And there we can see it's starting to Nyquist onto the, on the display. So um, you can do uh, time and you can change it with the arrows. So you can manually set the uh, time Go in this direction. There we go. Um, and you can change uh, time, you can change voltage, you can change the triggering type, and you can change the triggering level and things like that. So it's all got that built into it. Um, all right, so I need to change a generator so we can go up to this. My generator only goes up to 15 megahertz. So I'll need to change generator so I can get up to uh, 40 megahertz. Let me do that. All right, I uh, changed it to 10 megahertz. Let's uh, auto on that. And seems like it's triggering a bit funny. Uh, not quite sure what that's about. If you hit the S button, it does a single shot. Uh, so it must be aliasing somehow on the uh, on the trigger point. That's kind of interesting. All right, let's go up in frequency a bit. Oops, too far. All right. Here's a here's 20 megahertz. Yeah, it does seem to be kind of a. Let's see. Do I need a 50 ohm? Let me put a let me put a 50 ohm load in series here because I don't. I'm my generator probably wants a 50 ohm. 50 ohms. Eh, it doesn't really help. It doesn't really help. So we'll take that off so we get a bigger signal. Oops. Sorry, moving it away from the camera there. All right. Um, so it claims to be, let's see here, let's, okay, 21. Uh, intensity, the uh, amplitude is staying up. Here we go, the amplitude is starting to drop now. So I'd say the amplitude is maybe half, half now. Uh, 34 megahertz, yeah. So yeah, I don't know if I'd call it a 40 megahertz scope, but I'd call it a 30 megahertz scope. Yeah, not too bad, okay. Um, is it a great scope? No, absolutely not. But um, if you're just, you know, Climbing an antenna or or working on a car and you just what I find these instruments the best at Isn't necessarily making a measurement of the actual waveform itself. Okay, I think it's gonna be a bit difficult I mean, it'll get the job done, but it'll be a, a, a bit of a pain What it's really really good for is is the signal there or not is the signal is the clock present on a microprocessor? Is the data present is the RS-232 signals actually going up and down, right? That's hard to tell on a voltmeter and so you use these instruments just to kind of make a quick check of is it there or it isn't there, right? Or uh, is a power supply capacitor bad or not. Remember when I was troubleshooting that DVM, the power supply ca capacitor measured a voltage, but it had a whole bunch of ripple on it. It's, it's a little bit, you can put the meter into AC, and, but it's really nice to see a picture. And so that's what these things are good for. Looking at power supply ripple, 
uh, looking at signal integrity, looking at if a signal's there or not. So like you're working on a car, is the, is the CAN bus active? Um, am I getting a signal to the oxygen sensor? I mean, you know, things like that. I think, I think it'd be okay that way. Um, oops. So anyway, um, I think it definitely has a use case. It's, it's quite slow. And, uh, but it seems to be accurate in, in measurements and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I think it uh, would appeal, appeal to some people. And I'm not sure about, you know, test bench, hardcore electronics people. They might be disappointed in this, in this thing. But for, uh, you know, like I said, for an automotive guy or uh, a repairman who, you know, can't, doesn't want to lug around an oscilloscope and he just needs a quick check as like, is the signal there? Is, is the thing actually transmitting? You know, you, you can use, you can use something like this. Let's go back down to something more reasonable in frequency. Let's go down to, uh, you know, uh, you know, 14 megahertz, right? 14 megahertz, it's rock solid, right? It, it looks pretty nice. Um, so, yeah, anyway, there you go. That's my review.